Back from more gymnasium on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University in beautiful downtown Daytona Beach, Florida. It's time for the second of this evening's doubleheader featuring the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the reigning men's basketball conference champion, Texas Southern Tigers. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Michael Trevello. Happy to have your company. Henson White joins me once again. Henson, we got to get over the tragedy of the ending of the women's game. The men's game is a whole new contest. This one is a matchup of teams featuring very polarizing styles. Yeah, a nail biter in that last women's game. And now, you know, the men are coming out here to hopefully revitalize the energy in this uh, arena of more gymnasium. Uh, Texas Southern is not the greatest scoring team in the conference. I mean, for a team that's seven and three in conference, you think, oh man, they must be scoring a lot of points, but they're really not. Their defense, however, is the main, one of their main reasons that they're doing so well in conference. A top three defense in the SWAC coming against a top three offense in the SWAC. And that's gonna be the real tail of tape for this game. How will those offensive defenses shape up against each other? Now for a deeper dive into this matchup, it's time for the Southeast Toyota dealers' keys to the game. Henson White, what do you have? So for Texas Southern, their key is obviously going to be play to their strength. Make this a defensive game. Don't play how Cookman wants to play, fast and loose and, you know, up and down, up and down. Just play defensive. C control time of possession. I know it's not really a stat in basketball, but it will help them a lot. Take more time off the clock. They like these low-scoring games. They know their defense is really good. If you don't have to go out and score with them, you'll be in a good spot. But for Bethune-Cookman, make this an up-and-down game. Pay, play with pace. This Bethune-Cookman Wildcats team is one of the top pace of play teams in the nation for all of Division I. And they'll love to play with Texas Southern and run on transition, run on breaks get steals, force, uh, you know, errors, turnovers, all of that stuff. That's how they love to play. So they're going to want to make this an up-and-down game. They're going to want to keep the flow going, running fast. They want this to be a high-scoring game. The Wildcats, when they score more than around 70 points, usually win. So they can, that's kind of the benchmark. Now, obviously, you don't want to play like with that in mind, but that's what they're going to be reaching for. The real question is, will that Texas Southern defense, as we talked about, very tough defense, will they be able to hold them down? And they've got interior players, really good ones, and interior players that can score the basketball in Jamar Young Jr. and Grayson Carter, specifically Carter, the transfer from UTSA. He leads the team in rebounds per game with almost five. And something interesting to mention, right? We mentioned Texas Southern, great defensive team, great rebounding team, but they get a lot of rebounds and they give up a lot of rebounds as well. Yeah, it's just the nature of their game. They just like, you know, if you're gonna shoot, they shoot a relatively decent amount of threes. So they're gonna have, you know, those long rebounds that end up in opposition hands. So the Wildcats are gonna look to try to take advantage of that. This Wildcats team isn't the greatest rebounding team on their own. So they're gonna look to try to play in pace, try to cause turnovers, Hedy Harmon, as we're used to running in transition to Sean Dyson as well. They play well. Usually when those three guys are on, this whole team is on and we end up winning. Yeah, I'm looking for a bounce back game for Deshaun Dyson. Last two games at home, hasn't really been at the races against Alcorn and against Prairie View. Of course, the Wildcats beat the Panthers last time out with featuring a big game from Jacoby Hetty and a big game from Zion Harmon, especially down the stretch. He made a big defensive block that sealed the game for the Wildcats, but I think the Wildcats need Zion more than his scoring. They need his facilitation and they need his assisting. He is one of the top assisters in the SWAC. 82 assists coming into the game and he missed five games in conference because of an injury. Yeah, and when we, as soon as we got him back, you could really tell it really made the Wildcats offense click at an even faster and higher level. And Zion Harmon, I know that has, this has nothing to do with the stats you brought up, but it's currently a 94% free throw shooter, which is just an insane stat. He's almost, that is nearly, literally, if he goes to the line, is almost automatic for him throughout the season. But anyway, Harmon is a main facilitator for this team. He really controls the pace of playing the tempo, loves going to those alley-oops with Hetty, taking advantage of what the defense will give him, makes circus shots seem normal, deep threes, whatever you want, he can do it. 
Yeah, and, and we talk about Bethune Cookman a lot. One of the things we maligned about this team is their offensive stagnation. There's not a lot of off ball movement, but the stats don't speak to that. They're in the top five in the conference in assists per game, and with Harmon at 82, uh, Monty McIntyre also get up there, Dijon Dyson, a great facilitator as well. When they get into their offensive flow and run their sets, they are a great offensive team. Where they struggle is when they have to improvise and when they have to, you know, come up with things on the fly where it's a lot of just standing around and taking an open shot. Yeah, a lot of that ends up being Harmon hero basketball, which he's really good at, so it doesn't end up hurting us too, too much. But obviously, you'd want a little bit more off ball movement from them. But otherwise, offensively, it's a very interesting team to watch because sometimes you'll be confused a little bit. You'll be like, man, we're struggling. And then you'll look at the scoreboard and it's like, actually, we're not at all. So they do a great job scoring, and hopefully they'll keep it up against this tough defense. Starting lineups on the floor for Texas Southern, it is Colby Granger, Kenny Hunter, Jamar Young Jr., preseason SWAC player of the year, P.J. Henry, and Jalen Weisinger. And for the Wildcats, Jacoby Hetty, Zion Harmon, Deshaun Dyson, Reggie Ward, and James Henderson Jr. Same starting lineup it has been for the last couple of games. Although James Henderson has started, he has the most blocks on the team. He's not only the offensive threat at the five, that's more Reggie Ward's job if he plays down there, or if we see a DJ Carter Hollinger, he is undersized at 6'6", but he has the power to play that center position. Yeah. Jan he's done a great job in the time that we've had him out there just making sure and controlling the post especially as an undersized center and he's gonna have his work cut out for him as you'll soon, uh, soon see how much taller the Texas Southern players look in comparison especially considering Hetty is about Henderson's height yep. as the band looks to get the Wildcats height. The Hale Wildcats chant as tradition to begin the men's basketball game. It'll be Jamar Young Jr. to jump it up with James Henderson. Jamar Young has a three inch height advantage. As we're gonna fix the net real quick and then get underway. Bethune Cookman in the home black. It is blackout night here at Moore Gymnasium. Texas Southern on the road gray, trimmed in maroon. Gold numbers and gold trim for Bethune Cookman. Texas Southern wins the tip. Colby Granger controls and hands back to Kenny Hunter, and we are underway. Kenny Hunter hands it off to Jalen Weisinger. And a lot of the Texas Southern offense is just looking for that offensive option after the weave action up top and that'll be wildcat ball last touch by jamar young jr very quick start to this game not much time taken out of that possession getting the ball back up court now and hopefully the wildcats can keep that defensive pressure going first offensive possession for the wildcats there's jacoby hetty hands it to henderson on the baseline gets it back and it's blocked and that was the exact same play the wildcats started with against prairie View and m that led to a dunk long pass caught by young down the lane and a foul as granger wanted to tomahawk it over henderson and i'm gonna be honest i don't know what henderson can do if that's a foul he kind of stood still there wasn't really anything he did he didn't push him off of him but a foul is called as Number zero, Colby Granger, the Missouri City, not in Missouri, but in Texas, <laughs> native, almost <laughs> made something for his own personal highlight reel there, but. Yep, Colby Granger, a legacy student at Texas Southern. He's the son of SWAC Hall of Famer and TSU Vice President for Athletics, Kevin Granger, and his brother, Kevin Jr., also played for the Tigers. And he yeah. makes both free throws and gives Texas Southern a 2-0 lead. Tigers 7-3 in the division coming in. Wildcats a game back 6-4. Not that lines mean anything, but the last line I saw was BCU favored by a point and a half. Here's Reggie Ward. Looking for an opening. Picks it back to... Dyson, and Dyson doesn't will not get, save it. Yeah, doesn't get it off of the defender in time to keep the ball 
with the Wildcats. The Wildcats have started slow in this gym the past couple of games. Alcorn really boat raced them in the first half before the Wildcats came back and made that a close game. The Prairie View game was close early on and the Wildcats started offensively down the, uh, in the start, but came alive down the stretch. Granger, top of the key, off the front of the iron, no good. Dyson flashes through for the rebound. He pushes the pace ahead, Hetty. Fakes the catch and shoot, drives, gets to the lane, and scores. Tough bucket from Hetty, takes the outlet pass. And the Tigers oh. want to go in transition. Dyson says no shot. He attacks and gets fouled. No basket, not in the act of shooting. Really tough basket there from Dyson, but just doesn't count. But that's exactly how the Wildcats want to play. TSU tried to play like them, trying to move the ball immediately in transition. Dyson becomes a cornerback, intercepts it, runs it back down, and gets fouled. A blocking foul, so it's going to be an inbounds pass in case you're confused. But And that'll go against Weisinger, the Houston native. A couple of hometowners on this team. Weisinger one, Zaire Hayes another one. Henderson hands off to Harmon. Harmon, step back, long two, money. Gets those points back immediately. 4-2, Wildcats up early. Weisinger hands to P.J. Henry. Now up top, here's the big man, Kenny Hunter. Three from the wing. Rattles around and down from Jalen Weisinger. A tough basket made there. And now, you know, pressure's back on the Wildcats. It's kind of tit for tat start favors how they play but if you're not knocking down your shots it won't matter they try to throw it to ward on the baseline ward almost coughs it up and he does racing back his heady but a nice oh, little wow. body control by kobe granger for the easy bucket kobe, seven to four kobe granger with an extremely tough finish there to, to basically up and under it making that layup look easy wildcats two turnovers in the early going can't give this texas southern team who doesn't score a lot of points. Three opportunities to do so. Dyson, catch and shoot, no good. Long rebound to Ward. He battles underneath, and it's a tie-up. It should be Wildcat ball off the alternating possession. <laughs> Tried to immediately kind of answer back. He took that sudden dribble, almost like he was going to try to dunk it from the, <laughs> from the shoulder there, but now it's going to be an in another inbounds play for the Wildcats. Last time they did pretty well from this. Dyson fakes the shot off the catch and will reset with 18 to shoot. Dyson's double teamed. That means Harmon's open. Fakes the long three. Now he's in his bag. Goes past one. Floats it to somebody who's not there. Weisinger. Backdoor pass and a lay-in for Granger. And the Texas Southern Tigers are playing VCU basketball right now. Steals yeah. and scores. Yeah, Harmon went to make a fancy pass to nobody. Hetty probably was, I guess, the guy who would have been in that spot. And the Harmon flashes through, was open for a second there, but no one really had an angle to get him the ball. Dyson, open for three. Knocks it down. <laughs> Tough shot there by Hetty. <laughs> Back to, sorry, Jacoby Hetty with the shot there. Not usually his thing. Not a big three-point guy, although he is touted as a three-level scorer. Henry dances against Ward. Flicks it out. Pass wasn't great for Weisinger. Couldn't take the shot. Weisinger now drives. Euros through wow. the lane and reverse layups. Sometimes good offense better than good defense. There wasn't really a way to stop him there without fouling him. So he makes that really tough bucket. Eddie almost loses the ball. He's matched up with Granger. He goes by Granger and floats it up off the heel. No good, but nice rebound by Henderson to tap it back to Harmon. Now here's Dyson. Can't get the Ooh. floater to go. Almost traveled, but he got it to Dyson, 12 to shoot. Dyson being hounded by Kenny Hunter. Long three. Zion Harmon, no good. And... Whoa. And oh, watch out, Ward lost his shoe, five on four, and a lucky deflection for the Wildcats that goes out of bounds media. as we hit the first media timeout. Fast start for Texas Southern as they forced three Bethune-Cookman turnovers and have four points off of those turnovers. Homecoming.
conference play continues for VCU basketball. Sunday, Saturday, February 24th for a SWAC doubleheader. Come out and catch all the VCU hoops action as we host Alabama A&M for a pair of critical SWAC contests. The women tip things off at 2 p.m. with the men following at 4. Admission is free with a student ID. Can't make it to more. Catch all the action live on YouTube.com slash Network. And Southeast Toyota Dealers is a proud supporter of Batum Cookland basketball. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore Toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles and hence of the Texas Southern defense as advertised early on. Yeah, they've done a good job of stifling the Wildcats to start this game out, but they've got good looks. They've gotten to what they want to get to, those mid-range shots, good uh, good open threes. That Zion Harmon one, I won't really count as a good look, even though he is Zion Harmon. He makes those sometimes, but that, you know, tough shot there. But also, you know, they've done a good job of kind of stifling outside of Granger, who's been hot, and Lysak, who's also been hot. No one really, no one else has scored for Texas Southern. But it's been a lot of fast breaks, a lot of easy looks at the basket. Yeah. Everything in the paint except for that 1-3 for Texas Southern. Yeah, outside of that 1-3, there's all been inside. And then that free throw, man, those two free throws from Granger on that attempted Tamahawk. Wildcats need to get the offense going here, but it'll be Texas Southern ball and a baseline in as we get back to action. Marching Wildcats in the building, yeah. providing all the energy we need in here. P.J. Henry off the inbounds, and he is fouled on a reach-in by Zion Harmon, and Harmon gets an earful from his head coach. He didn't need to do that. Yeah, he's right. It's always funny to watch a player do a commit a foul right in front of their coach. Because usually you can tell if the coach agrees with the call or not due to how mad they are. Henry tries to catch and shoot baseline again. Harmon's there. And the Tigers will reset. P.J. Henry, SWAC preseason player of the year. Averaged 11.3 points last season. And that time he gets the assist to Colby Granger who hangs and scores. And Granger's been electric to start this game out. Granger averages only 4.1 points a game. He's already up to six. Seven-footer Elijah Hall saved the game. He screens for Dyson. And DJ Carter Hollinger is also in there for the Wildcats. Harmon skips high off the glass oh. and in. <laughs> Zion Harmon doing Zion Harmon things. Has the ball in a headlock and makes the layup. And, and that's, that's going to be three field goals. Uh, three free throws, excuse me, as Jalen Weisinger got hammered on the back end. And we saw this in the women's game, the fr three free throws off of fouling on threes. One of the things that hurt the Wildcats women down the stretch. Yeah. And Weisinger will go to the line for his first time today. Weisinger from Houston, Texas, and a transfer from Paris junior college where he had 8.1 .1 points and 1.9 rebounds and last year he was top 50 in the NCJAA in minutes per game nationally averaging 30 and a half that's a lot of energy that you got to expend every game This is the free throw. Hosley does a good job of getting that rebound. Zion, heat check, oh. bang! <laughs> I thought that was a pass at first to Hosley that he just wasn't there for, and it just kind of slides down into the basket. That's the second deep three we've seen Zion take. He's one of two. Zip to Henry. He tries to respond in kind, and he does. P.J. Henry, a 28.6% three-point shooter, and he takes a lot of them. Five-point lead for Texas Southern. That ball is poked to the backcourt, but it was touched, so the Wildcats will reset. Very persistent defense out of the... Hetty now tries a long three, and it's too strong. And the Texas Southern defense has made the Wildcats take these long threes. They've had no other looks. DJ there for the rebound. 
Eddie in transition, Harmon in the corner. Tries to work past his defender. Gets it to Halse. Elijah, hook shot, way too strong. And he is oh. hearing it from the more gym crowd. John Harmon does a behind the back pass to get it to him. Oh, DJ wrestling and then turning the ball over his heady. Jacoby, coast to coast, off the glass. And then Halse touched it last in Texas Southern ball as we head. No, we're not heading to another media timeout. This is a substitution for Texas Southern. More gym and Eli <laughs> Elijah wow. Halsey is the enemy at more gym right now. He has missed two excellent opportunities in the last two trips down the floor. But you got you got to pick his head up and don't let that not let that get to his head. You know, everybody makes mistakes. A couple of changes for Texas Southern. Zaitarius Mortal in along with Chris Craig, their leader in field goal percentage at 52 and a half. Five-point lead in the ball for Texas Southern. Almost halfway through this first half. Henry curls the screen back to Grayson Carter, the other big that the Tigers will bring to bear. He's got it in the corner. He takes a three over Halsey. No good. Rebound Dyson. Wildcats want to run. Zion against Henry. Is forced to the corner, throws up the lob, and Jacoby Hetty gets it to go off the fingertips. Just a little tip tap into the basket. Can't get his full hands on it, but just does enough to direct it into the basket. They love doing those alley oop set plays. Carter up top. Open three. Off the window, no good. Halsey battling for the rebound. Dyson also there, and he comes up with it. Pushes the pace to Jacoby Hetty. Jacoby, Dyson, long triple. Yes, sir! And compared to the offensive kind of the struggles of that first game, this has come out and immediately grabbed the attention of more gymnasium. Lots of threes shot. Lots of threes taken. Wildcats have hit three. Texas Southern's hit two. And it's 17 all. A long three. Mortal no good. Jose the board. And more Jim cheers for Jose as he gets that rebound there. He sets the screen. Dyson tries to throw it back to him and it's batted out of bounds by Grayson Carter as we head to our second media timeout. In case you missed it, recap all the excitement at the National Signing Day show for Bethune-Cookman football. Hear from head coach Raymond Woody Jr., offensive coordinator Joe Gerbino, and defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly for an inside look at everything Wildcat football. You can catch it anytime at youtube.com slash cat eye network. And hence it, it's hard to believe, but there's only one homestand left yes. after this for Bethune-Cookman. They'll welcome in the Alabama schools on the 22nd and 24th of February. All of your Wildcats boys will be pretty much baseball and track and field to close don't, out this spring semester. Don't forget softball. Don't forget softball. They've had a pretty good start to the year. Done a great, they've done a great job on their travel trip. Do a lot of, you know, games outside of Florida. They'll, thing they'll head to California to the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic here shortly. They started at the USF Invitational. Got the win against Illinois State to open up the year. 17 all as the Wildcats are on a 5-0 run leading up to the timeout. Hedy and Harmon, as advertised, they both have seven. Granger is playing out of his mind. The average is 4.1 points. He's already up to eight. Yeah, he's done a great job to start the game out. Some, you know, it, and he might be take over the offensive load at least to start this game out. Yeah. Well, the Wildcats have taken five threes, and they've pretty much needed to because except in transition, the Wildcats have not really gotten anything going in the paint offensively. Yeah. They're going to have to work on that. Then, you know, start this game out. Jose's got to, you know, look more sure of himself in the paint, especially dealing with all those taller forwards and centers. Heady to inbound, 11-17 to go first half, 17 all here at Moore. 
DJ Carter Hollinger yet to make an offensive inclusion. Passes the ball into Jacoby Hetty. He jumps once, twice, floats it up, and gets nothing but nylon. Might get the assist credit there, DJ, on that tough bucket from Hetty, but the shot clock doesn't reset. First time we've seen that today. Yep. Over, under on shot clock issues, three? <laughs> three, I, three and a half. <laughs> three and a half, all right. We keep it light here at the broadcast booth. <laughs> Wildcats, and the, now the scoreboard is completely off. Yeah. <laughs> Still have the stats up, though. But it is 19 to 17, Bethune Cookman with the lead. Eh, the scoreboard's back. Heady up to nine points on 50% shooting, four of eight from the field. Theus, Coach Theus ends up in <laughs> the top of the key <laughs> during the uh, time to fix the scoreboard. Got everything figured out. Yep. Texas Southern scoreless over the last three minutes and it's allowed the Wildcats to go on a 7-0 run. But all the momentum has kind of been broken by that media timeout and now this stoppage for the clock. Yeah. We are back underway. Here's Chris Craig. Chris Craig was the Ball honest. screen for Henry, gets Dyson in the air, push it, pushes off, and will reset. Jonathan Cisse, their best three-point shooter. That pass is deflected, and Cisse can't keep it in bounds. And he <laughs> almost lands right in the student section, which, if you're an opposing player, is not the place to land. No, I, I don't <laughs> think that, out of all the places in the, in the arena, I don't think you want to land with the student section. At least with the, uh, you know, the older fans, they don't get as rowdy. Wildcats turn Texas Southern over for just the third time. Dyson, long three, bingo! The immediate catch and shoot opportunity for Deshaun Dyson, and this is probably the best three-point start we've really seen out of this Wildcats team. Only three players have scored, Hetty, Harmon, and Dyson for the Wildcats. Henry, all the way to the cup and lays it in. And you like to say that good offense beat good defense. Not a lot that Deshaun Dyson could have done there. Yeah, I mean, once again, other than fouling, sometimes there isn't much you can do on a good drive like that. Especially when you're kind of equal in height. You don't have anything you can really pull out of. Zion, step back From. off the heel. Good box out by Craig to get the rebound. Yeah, shot that from his house. Yeah. Sometimes just chucking up the three is, is not good enough. You gotta run a set to get that look. Henry drives again, stops and pops on a turnaround and gets it to go off the front of the rim. And it's back to a one point game. Reggie Ward about to set, check back in as well as Damani McIntyre. Let's say they're running this top of the key play. Step back. Bow. Bucket and one. Oh, baby. <laughs> That's a tough bucket to Sean Dyson. We talked before the game, Henson, and, and I said I wanted to see a Deshaun Dyson pickup game as he's been down the last couple of nights. Yeah, then Hedy comes out. And already he's up to eight with a chance for one more. As I mentioned, only three players have scored for the Wildcats. Hetty has nine, Harmon has seven, and Dyson has eight, a chance to make it nine. And the Wildcats have 24. And, you know, playing against this top three defense, they really haven't shown the... Uh, oh, he misses the and one. Shown a lot of struggle there to start it out. Hetty comes out in favor of Damani McIntyre, and McIntyre immediately picks up a reach and foul. And, you know, leader of the, one of the top people in the nation in steals off of the bench, <laughs> laughing about that because he kind of knows that that was a yep. dumb little foul to pick up immediately. Number seven in the nation in steals per game, and he comes off the bench. <laughs> and he will hunt those passing lanes like a shark off the Daytona Beach sand. Off right the rim. pass off the rim. That's not how Grayson threw that one up. Little bit too high. Oh. Halsey crashes to the ground in the middle. Harmon goes baseline and turns it over. Here's Zaire Hayes. Floats oh. it up. Tomahawk jam missed. DJ can't get the board. It comes right back to Deion Stroud. Open three. No good. But another opportunity for Texas Southern. Into the middle. 
Shot back out. Double closeout attack and a scoop and no oh. good. Another offensive rebound. Grayson is ripped away. DJ Carter Hollinger gets it nice to go. Away. What a crazy 30 seconds. Just I, a lot of losses of possession there in that little situation. Jose does a great job getting that rebound, basically snatching it before they could even call a jump ball. And it's going to be another reach-in foul on Bethune Cookman. We'll see who this is on. 23. It's on Jose as we hit the under eight media timeout, end-to-end -end action, which is just how VCU likes it. It's 26-21, Bethune Cookman. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Here up on the newest VCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Make sure you are representing Bethune Cookman University Athletics to the fullest by the latest VCU gear online for the Bethune Cookman online store. Go to vcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest VCU clothing and apparel. That's vcuathletics.com and click on shop. As we fight to hear over the band, uh, Henson, your take on the last couple of minutes. It's been uh, very topsy-turvy, but the Wildcats have done a good job taking advantage of the you know, lack of scoring from Texas Southern. They've been struggling in recent minutes, and outside of short bursts, they really can't seem to get consistent scoring going. There's one thing we did point out. They're not the craziest scoring teams due to their defense that, you know, keeps them up in these situations. And, the Wildcat offense is, you know, finding rhythm. Even after taking Hetty out, we still were scoring, which has been, a, you know, an issue. Sometimes we take out players, and then we seem to, you know, start struggling a little bit more. But we're doing a great job, holistically, of keeping the pace of play high. Still seven minutes, around eight minutes left in this first half. Yeah, and, and we look at the key stat, which is turnovers and points off turnovers. Both teams have turned the ball over four times. Wildcats have five points off those turnovers. Texas Southern has four. But they're probably going to be in the, uh, the Tigers are going to be in a bonus. Five fouls already for BCU. That is the trouble early for the Wildcats, although nobody has more than one foul. Yeah, just a lot of reach-ins to start this game out. Texas Southern in after the reach-in foul before the media timeout. Hand off to Weisinger. He's against DJ. And DJ forces him all the way back. Now he's switched on to Hulse. And they get a blocking foul against Elijah. That's his second. And that was a good play to trap. It was just a little bit too aggressive. Yeah, Coach Diaz is telling uh, Jose that, hey, you didn't do, that's not on you, that's not on you, and is immediately getting in the referee's faces about that. And now the Tigers are in the single bonus. That's oh. a heave, oh and it's my good. Gosh. <laughs> Just pulls up from the, literally in front of the coaches for the Wild, from the Wildcats, and tough basket there is made, and they have to fix the net because of how that went in. Dyson behind the back, step back, triple. Oh it's my. good again. And a scoring clinic from both teams to start it out. Kind of going anything you can do, I can do better. Here's Weisinger, kick out, three from the wing. Off the heel, and Elijah Hulsey is really in there for his rebounding. Yeah. Zip pass to Dyson. He dances, he, he steps checked. back again. That's off the front of the iron. The Wildcats will sh keep shooting that three. Here comes Texas Southern in transition, that's and that's a foul. Yep, as DJ Carter Hollinger was not moved, was still moving at the contact, couldn't get his feet set. Wildcats have only been to the line for an and one in this first half. Meanwhile, the Tigers three of five from the charity stripe, and are going to the line for two more. Featuring Zytarius Mortal. Just a mere man, Mortal. <laughs> but uh, check that. This is Jamar Young. The pun doesn't work now. Yeah, Young, originally from Memphis, he makes the first one. Uh, originally from Dallas, Texas, started his career under Penny Hardaway at Memphis, but did not play due to eligibility issues after four seasons at 
Southern Methodist. Down in Texas. He has been all over the place. And now back in Texas at Texas Southern. It was a key piece for the Mustangs. That just kind of shows you the caliber of talent that head coach Johnny Jones can acquire here at Texas Southern. The Wildcats run the weave. DJ fakes the three. McIntyre takes the three and misses it long. And this is definitely a B squad in right now. The only starter in at the moment is Deshaun Dyson as Seneca Willoughby has replaced Zion Harmon. Coach Diaz irate about the positive grab on Tamara there by Young. And these are important minutes for the Wildcats. Can they maintain this advantage with the second string in? And that time they get it to turn over. And as long, and I think as long as the bench can keep pace, that's all you need out of them. You don't yeah. need them to go crazy scoring wise. Just keep pace. Make sure that you try to play good defense. The bench scoring as a whole has been an issue for the Wildcats this season. They'll get. Chris Craig for a reach-in foul. Another Texas native is Craig from Denton, home of North Texas University, but spent his first two college years at North Lake College in Dallas, averaged 17 points and seven and a half boards. Tipped. And that is tapped out of bounds by Jonathan Cece, and the Wildcats will keep it. Cece, the best three-point shooter on this Texas Southern team. A transfer from Incarnate Word last year. Scored 18.2 points a game, led the Cardinals in scoring. Did a good job on that possession, trying to just get possession back for his team. Can't get a firm grip on it. We know the Incarnate Word Cardinals pretty well. DJ Carter Hollinger, no. Tamara taps it back out. Another triple, no, but a foul underneath. Who's this gonna be on? It's gonna be on Chris Craig, and that's his second on the possession. Now Hetty's gonna come back in. Yeah, and a good job by Tamara to keep that possession alive. Hit the life out of that ball. Volleyball served it, and now Dyson comes out after a hot start. Yep, 11 Said. points for Deshaun Dyson. Yep, Harmon and Dyson getting some rest in. Hetty got, uh, got some rest in earlier in this half. Doing a good job of keeping everybody fresh. Hetty gets the ball off the inbounds pass, gets a screen from Cisse. Granger fights through it. 13 to shoot, here's the trap. Cisse puts the ball on the floor. McIntyre almost traveled. McIntyre gets it back. Damani, floater, Ooh. whoa, a short pass. Oh no, it was a pass. All part of the plan. <laughs> it was a pass, I was completely screened. I couldn't see DJ Carter Hollinger down there, but he caught the ball and finished. A great job by DJ Carter Hollinger by catching it up behind, like in front of his face just to put it up without having to turn all the way around to catch it. A strip by Damani. There's his first steal of the game. Will he go coast to coast? Ooh. He lets the defender fly by him. And Chris Craig ends up on the stage behind the goal. And we'll have another reach in foul, this time off the ball against Timera. And now they're gonna be on the line. They love calling these reaching fouls. Yeah, and that'll ball. send Texas Southern to the line. It'll be a one and one. Texas Thanks. Southern only has four fouls. Two of them on Chris Craig. With every foul except for maybe one, which was a shooting foul. And I think there was a blocking foul as well. Are all but not off in the ball, act of shooting, yeah. yeah. All off ball reach ins. So the refs are cracking down on that eight fouls in the first half. Here is Young at the line. Gets the first one to go with a one and one. Wildcats have only been to the line once compared to a couple trips now for the Tigers. Five of seven from the charity stripe is Texas Southern. And now six of eight. This one's a close one. 33-28, Bethune Cooking with the lead as we approach the under five minute media timeout. Seneca Willoughby controls. Hezzy uses his right hand, gets it to Hetty. Jacoby, backing down Granger. Granger dogging him. 
Eight to shoot. DJ gets to the paint, high off the glass, and it hits the heel and doesn't go. Texas Southern wants to run in transition. Thrown ahead, and the left oh, is blocked, oh. but the rebound comes right back to Cisse, who puts it in. A great job on the block by Carter Hollinger, but it ends up coming to naught. Yeah, Carter Hollinger and Tamara. Oh, I almost thought he was going to take that. McIntyre, he corner, will. off the heel. The Wildcats have cooled off in the last couple of minutes. They're still five of 11 from three in this first half. But it's back to a three-point game. McIntyre tried to hack at that ball. Henry almost had it stripped by Dyson. Cisse spins past McIntyre and is foul. Yeah, it was a little bit too much action from almost everybody on the Wildcats team. Yeah. Under five media timeout, and the Wildcats, whose lead was once seven, clinging to a three-point advantage. Stay up to date with everything Bethune-Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU underscore athletics. For the latest on BCU basketball, follow at BCU Hoops on Twitter and Instagram. Our social media guru, Autumn, as well as our SIDs, Brian and Bryce, do a great job of keeping BCU Nation updated. And don't miss a second of Wildcat basketball this season. Get your tickets to see Bethune-Cookman basketball live at Moore Gym, starting at just $15. You've only got two more chances. Yep. The 24th and 26th of February, they host the Alabama schools, but you can get your tickets for just $15 at the BCU box office or online at Ticketmaster.com. And Deshaun Dyson's gonna check back in for the Wildcats, and they really have missed his offensive gravity more than his scoring. He almost demands a double team every time he touches the ball. Yeah, he forces the, uh, the defense to focus him heavily, and that just makes it easier for a lot of the other players on the team to get good looks. We were talking about it, Dyson, talking about Hetty. It just forces, that's why he has so many assists. It's just, it's so often we'd see him get doubled and then have an open play on a switch or drive and be able to kick it because he's an incredible passer of the basketball. Thank you to the over 300 watching on the Cat Eye Network on YouTube. We have appreciated your patronage all season long, whether you're a fan of Bethune Cookman, Texas Southern, or a college basketball fan in general. As these two teams try and separate themselves from a crowded SWAC standings, as Cisse will head to the free throw line after the timeout. Men's basketball standings in the SWAC look like this. Southern leads the way at 9 and 2 after a win earlier today over Alabama State. Grambling State is second at eight and two. They could tie with a win tonight. Texas Southern is third at seven and three, but Thune Cookman fourth at six and four. They would jump Texas Southern into third with a victory this evening. As Cisse hits both free throws. Then Alabama State at six and five. UAPB, Jackson State, and Alcorn State all at five and five. Prairie View at four and six. Alabama AM at four and six. Florida AM at two and eight. And Mississippi Valley still winless. Starting five in for the Wildcats, trying to make some offensive noise after they've been scoreless for the last couple of minutes. That's allowed a 6-0 run for Texas Southern. That one, no good off the heel. The rebound just evades Reggie Ward and a chance to take the lead for Cisse, who drives, and it is a jump ball. The possession arrow favors Texas Southern. The fans in Moore Gym wanted to travel. I love when people call for, like, fouls and travel violations, especially when you can tell somebody doesn't know, so it's like, look around and start just <laughs> calling for it. But jump ball call there. We set a possession for Texas Southern. Wildcats have still only had one trip to the free throw line in this first half. It was an and one attempt that was missed by Deshaun Dyson. Back to a pass and a foul by the Wildcats on a dunk attempt by Kenny Hunter sends the Tigers to the line again. They have killed Bethune-Cookman at the free throw line. Nine of 11. Yeah, James Henderson Jr. gets another foul called on, him on a dunk attempt. This time, he, I guess, hit him on the back end when he was coming down. And this foul trouble is really going to come back to hurt Bethune-Cookman, who does not have a lot of depth, especially in the post. 
And they give up a lot of height, especially to players like Kenny Hunter and Jamar Young Jr. But he misses both. And then a foul is gonna go against the Wildcats. I'm not so sure on that one. I don't even know who that's on. I think it was on James again. And if it now, is, that's his third. No, it's on, I think that was on Dyson. Yeah, it was on Dyson, they're saying. Wow, and that sends them back to the line and now in the double bonus for two more shots for Jamar Young Jr. and he makes them pay. That is a baffling call. Already a ton of foul trouble. And when you look at the, we've pretty much played everybody except for uh, Mason Dorsey. Makes one of two to tie the game at 33. The Wildcats have led by as many as seven. Only a couple players have touched the floor, but pretty much everybody who regularly plays has already played a little bit. And a lot of them already have a foul. Henderson takes the dribble. Ward on the outside. He's still scoreless today, trying to change that. And he'll go to the free throw line as he attacks Weisinger. Tough shot. Loves to drive Reggie Ward. Gets the foul call on him, and now he's going to send himself to the line. Yeah. Reggie Ward listed at 6'6", the junior out of Chicago, Illinois, transfer from Riverside College. He plays so much bigger than his height. Single bonus now for the Wildcats. It's five <laughs> fouls, 15 fouls to start out. Actually, not 16. yet. Single bonus starts at 7. Oh, my apologies, but 16 fouls according to our stat sheet here, but only 15 <laughs> on the big board. You're right, it would be. So yeah, you're right, six fouls on the stat sheet, five on the scoreboard here in the gym. I, I'm inclined to go with the stats, so the Wildcats in the bonus. 2.43 to go in the first half. It's been a back and forth battle. Missing the second free throw is Ward and the Wildcats only up by one. And maybe, and an offensive foul for an illegal screen, they'll call that one on Kellen Farouk. <laughs> and James Edison Jr. celebrates like he just won the lottery <laughs> under the basket. Uh, so audible, I, yes. So the um, oh no, offensive fouls is, would not send them to the line. So yeah. Wildcats in the bonus, single bonus. And a chance to increase a one-point lead with 2.35 to go first half. Ward, tough catch in the high post. He goes straight at the defender and gets a jump ball call. The Wildcats will maintain possession off the arrow. And immediately, one thing I want to point out defensively that was done really well there, he noticed that he's probably going to get called for a foul for Luke Doug. So he immediately goes to lock with the ball to either strip it or probably not take it away, but obviously get a jump ball call and make that shot much harder, if not impossible, and make them restart their possession. Eddie all the way up top to James Henderson, and the handoff to Zion, and the Wildcats will reset. Wildcats just won from their last four for the field, and it's a seven to one run for Texas Southern to close the half. Ward, downstairs, no shot, with five to go. Ward with three, Willoughby from the moon. Oh, he got it! Seneca Willoughby. Tough three. On a no, wing and a prayer. Yeah, no time on the clock. Basically, he took it from the W on Wildcats. Zip pass to the left for Henry. P.J. Henry back to CeCe. CeCe between the legs. Zion guarding. Takes the three. Misses it short. And then a scramble for the ball is grabbed by Texas Southern. Henry takes the three. Got it. Wildcats being out-rebounded 18-13 at the moment. An odd man rush there off of that board. Tamara had to fix the basket again. Zion in traffic gets fouled. But the Wildcats currently getting out-rebounded 18-13. Off, Out-offensive rebounded 5-3. And the second chance points favor Texas Southern six to two, and yet the Wildcats still have a one point lead. Very, very interesting basketball game started out. That's a rare miss 
for Zion Harmon from the free throw line. He shoots 94%. That's tops in the SWAC. 68 for 72 before that miss. And it's just been a kind of off-kilter performance for the Wildcats. They've been frustrated by this Texas Southern defense, and they've had to resort at times to chucking up threes, but they've hit a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, 6 to 12, they've hit 50% of their threes, and they're shooting 50% from the field. Have more shots than the Tigers, six more. They forced seven Tiger turnovers and have 12 points off those turnovers. CC back to Grayson Carter. CC spins, stumbles, and scores. 38 all with under a minute to go first half. This is very similar to that Prairie View game as Coach Theus calls a timeout and not really happy with what he's seeing defensively from his club at the moment. Yeah, and that's just a tough situation coaching-wise. They're doing a lot right in certain situations on the offensive end. They've done a good job of taking advantage of the little stuff that Texas Southern is giving them. And Texas Southern is showing why they have a top defense in the slack, just closing down on everything, making them take tough shots. The reason that this game is tied is because the Wildcats have been hitting them at such a consistent rate. But really where the Tigers have been able to shift back is the free throw line. 15 free throws just to a paltry five for the Wildcats. Already 11 personal fouls, seven for the Tigers, but that free throw line stuff is going to kill them later in the game. PCU baseball is back this Friday and it's time to pack the jack, come out and support the Wildcats as they look to build on a smack title run last season. The first pitch of the 2024 season is set for Friday, February 16th at 7 p.m. as the Wildcats take on the Stonehill College Skyhawks. Tickets available starting at $10 at the BCU box office. Wildcats with the ball in a tie game. Texas Southern, after a hot BCU start, has reeled the Wildcats back in. And I think that's just because the Wildcats have not been getting the shots that they were early on, especially from three. Kind of regress to the mean this game. Willoughby face guarded by his opposite number, P.J. Henry. 15 on the shot clock. Somebody's got to come help. Ward does. Carter Hollinger on the baseline, goes past Grayson and gets fouled. And, and he scores! Goes in. Crazy That's a bounce. little more magic on the rim right there. You can't really count on those going 100% of the time, no, but I... sometimes you get lucky. And DJ's headed to the free throw line. The Wildcats uncharacteristically just two of five from the stripe. Yeah, yes, they haven't been to the line that much, but they haven't been making them. They're kind of cold from here. And Not he gets DJ. the three-point play. Um, as a team, they're second in the conference in free throw percentage at 74%, the Wildcats. That is the way they win a lot of their games. 41-38. One second different shot clock to game clock. Tigers will hold for the final shot of this opening half. Cisse guarded by Harmon. Cisse goes past Harmon, and Zion recovers. Ten to shoot. Cisse, step back. Front iron, back iron, tipped and in. It was tipped by Colby Granger, and that's the end of the first half. The Wildcats holding a slim 41-40 to 40 lead as this score has gone back and forth and back and forth. The Wildcats have done it from outside the paint. The Tigers have done it from inside the paint. Hanson, your thoughts on the first period? Really tough showing from both teams. Now, defensively, both teams have kind of been not at the races, I'd say. I've, and at the same time, just a lot of good offense from both teams. Harmon, Dyson, H Hetty have played outstanding. Dyson's three for four from three. We saw that Willoughby three with no time left. So we've had a lot of stuff where it's not necessarily poor defense on either team's fault. Texas Southern also see Cisse on that final possession showing a lot as we fix the nets here in more gymnasium. <laughs> but a lot of tough possessions, a lot of tough drills. And hopefully if you're, you know, if you're a Wildcats fan that you want them to keep at this consistent offensive pace, but maybe slow them down a little bit more 
defensively. Yeah, we'll take a break for the halftime interval. When we come back, it's the Toyota Dealers halftime report and the second half between the Wildcats and the Tigers. It's a one point BCU lead, 41 40 at the break here at Moore Gymnasium. You're listening to Bethune Cookman basketball on the Cat Eye Network.
Welcome back to more gymnasium on the campus of Bethune Cookman University as we get ready to start the second half between the Bethune Cookman Wildcats and the Texas Southern Tigers. The Wildcats have a 1 point 41 to 40 lead over Texas Southern at the break. It's now time for your Wildcats halftime report sponsored by Southeast Toyota Dealers. Let's get you those player stats first for Texas Southern. Granger and Henry both had 10. Weisinger has nine with three of three from the floor and two of two from beyond the arc. Cisse has six, Young has five, and that's it. Only five players doing the scoring for Texas Southern. For Bethune, Cookman, Dyson has 11 on four of six and three of four from deep. Also three rebounds for Deshaun. Jacoby Hetty has nine. Zion Harmon, eight. DJ Carter Hollinger, seven. Willoughby three, then Kataire two, and Reggie Ward has just one. Elijah Halsey has no points, but he has a team high for rebounds. Game high for rebounds is Granger with five. Henson White is back alongside me. Henson, what do the Wildcats need to do to close out and get another big win here at home? You know, they have to keep the scoring rate up, you know. Talked about it a little bit at halftime, off, you know, off mic. Very, we're spotty scoring, a lot of sh shots that, you know, not the most high percentage of looks, and you gotta hope that we can keep that going. You know, shooting 50% from three is, you know, not something you wanna count on for the rest of the game, right? Yeah. And then the other side is defensively, you just gotta do more. Can't foul, you're already at a lot of fouls, 11, but no one's in real foul trouble yet, but obviously you don't want to get any more fouls. They've already gone to line 15 times, way more than you have. Try to drive against them, try to do something to get them in foul trouble. They're comfortable playing how, you know, the Wildcats want to play, but even then, if we play a little bit better defense, we would be in tip-top shape. Yeah, so. Wildcats also need to rebound better. They're being out-rebounded 19 to 13. Now, that's not the dirge of rebounding that they were against Alcorn State, where they got out-rebounded by 20. But at times, the Wildcats had a chance to push the lead larger than they had it, which was up to seven, but they kept giving up offensive rebounds. The Tigers have six, the Wildcats have just three, leading to eight second chance points for Texas Southern to Bethune-Cookman's two. That is the biggest gap in statistical averages at the moment. Yeah, they'll have to work on that in, you know, they probably talked about it a lot of halftime, fighting harder on those offensive and defensive boards. This gym, as always, electric. The Wildcats have given the hometown faithful things to cheer about with six three-pointers and 50% from deep in the first half. And you feel that they're gonna have to continue that scoring rate from beyond the arc, or even better in the second half to have a shot because the interior defense of Texas Southern has been strong. Yeah, something that they're gonna have to push against. Crowd has been really hyper this game, so that'll probably help them. Hopefully they don't get too caught up in the moment, though we've seen that from time to time where after a big play, well, you know, a little mental, a slight mental lapse, and the other team doesn't have that feeling, so they'll immediately try to kick that ball back up. So just some stuff we gotta work on. That was your halftime report sponsored by Southeast Toyota Dealers. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore Toyota.com today. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places, and the Wildcats could be going to the top three in the conference standings if they can win tonight. They would put them on an even record with Texas Southern and the game in hand. The Wildcats have a game in hand on most of the top five. The only one they don't have is Grambling State. Yeah, I mean, they've done a great job of beating the teams that people didn't think they'd beat. And that's how, that's, you know, that's a quick way to gain recognition in your conference. If you're beating the teams that everyone's like, oh, these are the best teams in the conference, you quickly will find yourself being that best team in the conference. Yeah, and a team that, you know, if, for say, we get like the third seed in the conference tournament, you know, at, at a Jackson State or an Alcorn State, you know, is looking up at us like, I didn't want to play them in the first round. Yes. You, you, being that team is, is kind of important. It kind of fits with the mentality of Reggie Theus and what he decides to impart to his team. Yeah. But the backbone of this Wildcats squad has always been tough defense and forcing turnovers, and they haven't done a lot of that tonight. Seven turnovers, 12 points off those turnovers, but they've also given the ball away a couple of times, and 
again, they haven't played great defense with Texas Southern shooting 50% from the field. They have a one-point lead. Texas Southern starts with the ball, and away we go in half number two. They work it down to Granger, and then a free throw line jumper hits the back iron from Kenny Hunter. Starting five, back out on the floor for the Wildcats. Hetty, Harmon, Ward, Dyson, and Henderson. Harmon face guarded. He gets by one, but the switch is there. Ten to shoot. He takes a big three, and he picks up right where he left off at the end of the first half. This is some absurd baskets being made by our Wildcats. Lead back to four. P.J. Henry has usually had a response for everything that Zion Harmon has done today. He'll give it up to the junior Weissinger and a whistle and a foul on Zion Harmon underneath. And here we go again. Yeah, this is the last thing you wanted to see is just it's kind of errors. And you already have a team that's in foul trouble, so to speak. You don't want to put him in the bonus early again. Five players with two fouls for the Wildcats. Catch and shoot for Cisse. No correction, uh, Henry. And that one goes down. Harmon got to be careful to avoid a backcourt violation. Coach Theus wanting a foul there. Dyson hit some tough shots in the first half. Harmon. Gets into the lane and he will be reached in upon. A couple of candidates for this foul, but it will go on Jamar Young Jr. That'll be his third foul, so he's the first player in the ball game with three. And we talked about Texas Southern not drawing a lot of fouls, but they are concentrated on a couple of people. Young now has three and Craig has two. That's five of their eight. Yeah. Hand off Zion, he takes the three. Misses it short, rebound Reggie Ward. Ward, iso play underneath, wow. and he gets hammered, and the ball drops through the bucket. Wow. A lot of Ward's in bounces as well on these, on these and ones. The Wildcats team has been playing with some fire in them. Yeah, they haven't gotten to the paint a lot today. But when they have, Texas Southern has not made it easy for them, and they've had to resort to tough buckets like that. Ward off the front, back and down for the end one. And I got a feeling this one's going to be close all the way. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's a five-point lead, but that doesn't mean much. Neither team is led by more than seven, and both teams have led by at least six. Here is Weisinger. On the handoff, Colby Granger, he throws it out of bounds off of oh, Henderson. The great. ball stays with Texas Southern. Great job by James Henderson by blocking that off because he was wide open. He just gets his leg out there, knocks it out of bounds. Nine to shoot. Hetty gets a piece of the inbounds pass, but it comes right to Gr Carter. Henry. Back to Carter on the pick and roll, and he'll be fouled and go to the line, and that is the third on James Henderson. And the Wildcats could be in all sorts of foul trouble here in the second half. Yeah, you set yourself up for that when you, you know, you foul a lot early. Petty has no fouls, and Ward has no fouls, and Willoughby have no fouls, and that is the only players, only three Wildcats have zero fouls to start the second half. Yeah, I mean, and if you're a guy like Mason Dorsey, right, the guy that sits the bench. Yusuf Tamara that doesn't get a lot of playing time. Uh, even a Jason Matthews potentially. Be prepared to get some minutes tonight because you might they might need you. Yeah, we're you know you, we're gonna use a lot of our bench if we you know have to here. This is Grayson Carter at the line, the UTSA transfer originally from Dallas, Texas. A four-star recruit coming out of high school makes both free throws. He was the 10th best center nationally in his high school class. High marks here at Texas Southern. Oh. 
That's about all you can say. Yeah, it is. It's who. <laughs> nice move, step back, swish. Deshaun Dyson is in his bag this evening. And he's got 13. Three all the way. Back iron, no good. Long rebound is kept alive by Texas Southern. Henry, whoa, whoa look out. And he's going to hear it from this more gym crowd. That may be the ugliest shot that P.J. Henry has made all season. Yeah, that was, it wasn't, he was trying to, I think he was moving and that messed up his angle. Because if he had it on target, it would have went in, but. Dyson dancing again, stepping Whoa. back. <laughs> off the heel, long rebound, and taller than everybody is Jalen Weisinger. And then wide open is P.J. Henry, who lays it in. That's a Bethune-Cookman-like play. Yeah. Wide open player, always running. We haven't seen a lot for that from the Wildcats today. They've been content to kind of play this slow half-court game and not run a lot. And it's been working, which is nice to see. Zion against his own bench. Steps back off the jab and oh. knocks it down. <laughs> almost looked like he, yeah. from our angle, it looked like it almost was gonna hit the, go through the rim and just swishes it in. Wildcats have hit eight threes in the contest. Henry, the SWAC preseason player of the year, passes it off. And now Colby Granger, who's had one of his better nights of the season, averages four points again, our game already up to 10. Four to shoot, Granger oh. lost the handle, Ward faces up. It's good if it goes, but it does not go, and a good box out for Henderson to get the rebound. Yeah, good defensive against, possession there. Yeah, especially against the taller defender to get that board. Is, Harmon wow. had his pass deflected away. And Texas Southern wants to go fast. Weisinger gets oh. his shot rejected this by James in. Henderson. Tigers keep the possession though. Henry, long three, in and out, but another offensive rebound for Texas Southern, and Kenny Hunter applies the finish. And that's the problem when James Henderson has to came, came out to help. You don't have him down there to get that help with the board, and you got that big guy in Hunter. Just makes it tough. Harmon blows past one defender and Ooh. is fouled. He ends up with his rear end against the wall, but he'll go to the line when we come back. We take our first media timeout of half number two. Wildcats still holding on to a 52-48 lead here on the Cat Eye Network. Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat Eye Network. If you or your business is interested in partnering with us here on the Cat Eye Network, you can reach out to the Wildcat Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. And there is no BC without you. Show your support for Bethune-Cookman Athletics by joining the Wildcat Champions Club today. Help build a championship culture at Bethune-Cookman. You can donate and join at cookman.scalefunder.com. That's cookman.scalefunder.com. So it's the battle of the perimeter shooting of Bethune-Cookman and the interior presence of Texas Southern. Yeah, I mean, if they're not going to give you the the paint easily and you're not going to really be able to get a good shot a good look in there you're going to have to take threes and they have been amazing 50 percent from beyond the arc which is absurd and the and even though texas southern's only shooting four for 15 just because of how the game has been going sometimes you'll see him just pull up and think it's going in so 12 to 17 from the free throw line and that's what has kept texas southern in this game is yeah this and also henry six of ten and two of five from deep. I mean, he is as advertised SWAC preseason player of the year. Yep. Granger got hot at the start and was kind of cooled off and not really done as much. But they're going to look to get the ball and try to score some more, get back into the, get the lead back for Texas Southern. Hunter is interesting to me because they have him on the perimeter a lot and he really doesn't like dribbling or shooting threes. So it kind of just awkwardly ends up holding up their possessions a lot of the time. Yep. So Colby Granger, who has 10 points tonight, averages only four a game. His season high is 14 against North Carolina A&T. They played that MEAC school, and they also played Howard 
at the, I have it somewhere, uh, B Boost Mobile HBCU Challenge in Las Vegas. They lost to NCAT and they beat Howard in two games out there. By one, and now the scoreboard back off, so that's two <laughs> for two, the 3-5. Two, two scoreboard issues right now. <laughs> but a good night for Granger, but really outside of Granger and Henry and maybe Weisinger, it's not been a lot on the offensive end for Texas Southern. I mean, Cisse has got six, Young's got five, and Hunter and Carter both have two. So very top-heavy scoring-wise, and as it is for Bethune-Cookman, Harmon's got 14, Dyson's got 13, henny has got nine. Henny had nine of the first 12 points for Bethune-Cookman and has cooled off since then. Yeah, I, Hetty took that break in that first half and hasn't, you know, really been off at the races since then, but the Wildcats have done a good job spreading the scoring around, relatively speaking, and Texas Southern, this time has been a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not sure what they're they're looking at. They seem to be talking with the ground staff or arena staff, rather. So it is a bit warm in here. Do you think that they need to turn on the AC again? Now, remember back in the Jackson State game, we almost had a game be delayed because it was too hot in here. They had to turn the AC on. I wonder if that's the discussion right now. Possibly. The scoreboard also is having some issues. It looks like above the basket. Oh yeah, the scoreboard above the right-hand basket is not correctly displaying the seconds. It just says 15, not 1509. And we can't see the left, scoreboard above the left one, so I, I assume it's the same. I will ask down to the table to see what's going on. It's gonna be laughing about whatever it is, so. Yeah. But in the meantime, we get to talk about baseball because baseball season is coming up. The Wildcats open up against Stonehill College this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday series. Get yourself out to the Jack or enjoy it live on Cat Eye Network Radio, where myself and Bryce Wojnowski will be bringing you all the action throughout the baseball season. You're going to be out there for a couple of those games. Yeah, I'll be out there probably for... Uh, Maybe not this weekend, <laughs> but definitely I'll be in the booth for some of those games, and I'll be in the stadium as well. So you're, if you're going to be missing out on my voice, don't worry. Go watch baseball. I'll be there. I promise. So <laughs> both head coaches are in deep consultation with Alvin Wyatt, who's our equipment and facilities manager, and both of the referees. The issue appears to be the clock issue on the stage side. It is not replicated on the non-stage side off to the left. That is showing the correct clock, but the it is not showing the seconds yeah. on the clock on the right-hand side, just the minutes. Thank you for sticking with us here on the Cat Eye Network as we try and sort this delay out. And I wonder if they'll just play with it because yeah. The big scoreboard with the clock fully working is right behind it. So if they're asking about like players being able to know what time is, how much time is up, they can look over at the scoreboard that's behind the basket and see it. And we will go back to action. Yep, and that is a Wildcats problem. So it's not even a you know an argument well in the away team kind of situation. So hopefully more gym might count down for them. <laughs> so here we go. Timing. Issues aside, we are back underway. Wildcat ball with a four-point lead. Harmon with his heels on the time strike. Six to shoot. Offensive foul. Oh. The three was good by Deshaun Dyson, but it will not count, and the coaching staff is irate. It's an illegal screen. And now I think they're going to review this. And they're going to review as this game has ground to a halt. It was actually a pretty, uh, yeah, pretty nice flowing game. Not a lot of fouls, not a lot of timeouts here in the second half. And I mean, now There were a lot of fouls, just not well, shooting ones. Yeah. And, and then, but. Now we get the, the clock issue and now we are going to the monitor to check something 
I'm not. Illegal screen. They, I think the illegal screen that they called on. On Halse. That is his third foul. So both centers for the Wildcats have three fouls. Halse has three, and Henderson has three. We may be in a situation where we have to put DJ or Reggie at the five, and they're, those two are only 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, both play bigger than their height, but, you know, obviously you'd want your actual centers to be playing those center minutes. Yeah, we're up against 6'10", Grayson Carter, 6'11", Jamar Young, 6'8", Kenny Hunter, and they wave off the basket. That's a tough call on Bethune-Cookman. Yeah, you make that tough basket and just doesn't work out in their favor. They were checking to see if the ball was released before the foul. Thank you, Bryce, for keeping us up to date of all the happenings at the table. We are not at the table. We are up in the corner to the left of the camera. Yep. So the Wildcats turn it over for the sixth time and it's Texas Southern ball. As I mentioned right at the beginning of the second half, I think this one's gonna come right down to the wire and it's a two point game again. That's a nice finish by Weisinger as nobody was in the paint. Yeah, really tough finish by Weisinger there. They have been face guarding the guards way out by the half court stripe. Just no love for Harmon. Ward 12 to shoot. Hand off Dyson. And now screen for Dyson. He dances, three to shoot, gets to the lane, has his shot blocked. Can't get the look he was looking for. And then Henry, open three, no good, and nice board by Dyson. Now the Wildcats want to go with some tempo here. Harmon all the way through, lost the ball, and Henry picks it up. Now it's a three on two the other way. Lob up, good. And it's a tie game at 52. The ball almost floated in the air there. This was in a perfect spot to finish off that alley you play. Had he tried to play it as best as he could. Wildcats scoreless over the last 234 on a Texas Southern run that has closed the gap. First really extended scoreless drought for the Wildcats. Harmon back to a pass. Jose gets stripped as he went to the lane. Another Wildcat turnover. Henry all the way. Oh. Blocked, but a foul on Harmon, and that is Zion's third. Harmon with three, Halsey at three, Henderson with three, and the scoring scoreless drought continues. And I think they're going to go to the monitor to see if it was a goaltend. The Wildcats already up to 3,000 in the period, as are Texas Southern. They've given Texas Southern the points on the board as if it was a goaltend. Yeah. And the score stands at 54 to 52. And an 8-0 run for the Tigers. And this is exactly what happened in the Prairie View A&M game. The Wildcats went to sleep midway through the second half. Prairie View came all the way back, almost tied it. But in this game, the Wildcats do not have the benefit of a 10 plus point buffer at the start of the second half. Nope, they are getting been close all day. Games have been close since the women's game. I don't think we really had any real separation. Yep, both games close. Texas Southern is led by six, but that was a 13-7. The Wildcats have led by seven. That was a 33 to 26. And ever since then, it's been basically within five points. But this is the first Texas Southern lead for quite a while. The Wildcats led by one at the break and started off fast. And then have gone completely cold over the last 314, allowing for an 8-0 Texas Southern run. Home conference play continues for BCU basketball this Saturday, February 24th for a SWAC doubleheader. And it'll be a two-shot penalty, so it's not a goaltend. Come out and catch BCU Hoops action as we host Alabama A&M for a pair of SWAC contests. The women tip things off at 2 p.m. while the men follow at 4. Admission is free with a student ID. Can't make it to more. Catch all the action live on YouTube.com slash Network. And the air has been completely taken out of this gym right now. Yeah, it's very, 
no one likes, you know, all the stoppages in plays. Players don't, I mean, players get to catch their breath, but especially if you were flowing before it, now it's kind of like you got to, okay, got to get re-warm again, basically. P.J. Henry to the line. He's zero of zero from the strike today, his first trip, and he misses his first one left. Keeps the zero in the made column, but... Texas Southern has a lot of depth off the bench to bring to bear. Cissé's at the table right now, and also Zaytarius Mortal and Zaire Hayes have seen some minutes. And they fixed the uh, scoreboard, which is nice. Yep. And it's a one-point Tigers lead, 53-52. Flashbacks from the women's game. Similar score line at the end of that. Well, he's still got 13 minutes to go here. Lots of time to put up some more points. Reggie Ward on the baseline. Iso ball against Hunter. Ward gets past Hunter, tries to dump it to DJ, and he turns it over in traffic. There's just been no love in the paint for the Wildcats at all today. There's no room to work, really, for the Wildcats down low. Ninth Wildcat turnover. CC spins. He loves these tough mid-rangers, and he gets another one. Tough bucket. Here's in transition. That's Hollinger got yeah. whacked. You can't do that. Man. And Coach Theus wants, a, wants flagrant. a flagrant or an intentional. And the ref is saying that he's running. They're not going to review, but kind of jumped on his back. I mean, I don't... And they will review it. Oh. So it's taken more wind out of this gym. I think the last eight minutes have taken longer than the entire first half combined. Yeah, it was very, it was a very rapid first half, but now we're back to another review. Southeast Toyota Dealers is a proud supporter of Bethune-Cookman basketball. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore Toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. And in case you missed it, recap all the excitement of a historic National Signing Day for Bethune-Cookman football by checking out the 2024 National Signing Day show. Hear from head coach Raymond Woody Jr., offensive coordinator Joe Gerbino, and defensive coordinator Robert Wimberley for an inside look at everything Wildcats football. You can catch it all anytime at youtube.com slash cat eye network. So it's a common foul on the floor, which looking at it in real time, it appeared like it was to me. I didn't think there was anything malicious there. Yes. It will when put you're, Carter Hollinger at the line. Yeah, when you're that tall, you kind of end up, if you jump for something and you get your knee, your legs up, you're kind of at most players' backs. So it's an awkward situation. <laughs> DJ gets the first one, Carter Hollinger. Has traveled a long way playing his college basketball, originally from San Diego, California. Played his first three college seasons at Montana and is the former Big Sky Freshman of the Year. DJ a senior this year. Three. He gets both to go, one point game again. Three completely different time zones. Montana, uh, San Diego, and Florida. Weisinger stops and pops, and it's in and out. But another offensive rebound for Texas Southern, this one from Carter. The Wildcats don't have a true center on the floor with the three fouls to Halsey and Henderson. So they are set to fall further behind in that rebounding battle. Eight to shoot, and a double dribble violation. That's the fourth double dribble of the day here today. At three in the women's game, yeah, now one in the men's. Kind of rolled the ball along the ground there. You can't really do that. Wildcats within one. Even having not played the prettiest basketball here in this second half, DJ shovels it to Ward. He takes a baseline jumper, front iron, back iron, no. And those are the kind of shots that are going to have to go down because the Tigers are not giving them anything inside. CC to Carter, turned it over. Seneca Willoughby running the floor. Willoughby looking across, defender in the air. And a foul as Dyson got hit on the back when he tried to pass it underneath. 
and then we'll have a media time out. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. And make sure you are representing Bethune-Cookman University Athletics to the fullest. Find the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune-Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop. One point lead for the Tigers here, Henson. Um, man, it, it's really anybody's game right now. What is one thing for each side that could, can tip the scales in the last 10 minutes? If the Wildcats can get uh, their offense more consistently, that will obviously shift it back into their favor. Defensively, they're doing an all right job. Only 15 points scored. Rebounding would really help. If they can get back into the rebounding game, they're down uh, in that stat by eight. If they can get that closer, and pull it really back in control, or at least a closer number, they could really do some damage against Texas Southern here down the stretch. And for Texas Southern, if they start knocking down their three, they're taking 16, only made 25% of them. If they start knocking down their threes and taking advantage of that of long range opportunity, they can really pull away here. And again, I have to reiterate that both of the Wildcats centers, Elijah Halsey and James Henderson, have three fouls. So right before that break, the Wildcats were playing with no true five on the floor. And against Grayson Carter and Kenny Hunter and Jamar Young, that's not gonna be a good time. Yeah, I mean, you have three fouls on Young and then Hunter only has two though. Weisinger also has three for Texas Southern. Seneca Willoughby will run the offense, the second unit majority out there right now. With Deshaun Dice in the main scoring threat. They tried to run an elevator screen for Dyson, but no shot opportunity was there. Carter Hollinger takes a baseline jumper and misses it short. And the ball is on the end line, but last touched by Jacoby Hetty. Hetty pointed straight at the spot the ball hit, but unlucky in the ball just staying with Texas Southern. Yeah, and the Wild, when the Wildcats went away from playing their starting five in the first half, that's when Texas Southern kind of went on a run because the Wildcats didn't really have any offense without Harmon and Hetty on the floor. Hetty and w Do uh, Dyson are on the floor, but no Harmon. Into the corner, baseline jumper is good for Jamar Young. A tough shot from Jamar Young. Man. Correction, that was Hunter. Or Hunter, rather. Three-point lead for the Tigers. Seneca Willoughby works right wing. Back to DJ. Not a lot of movement in front of Seneca. He tries to go baseline, floats it up, gets it in. Very tough basket from Willoughby. Given what the D, you know, all those tall guys down low, he just got to float it up as high as he really can to make that shot. No P.J. Henry on the floor right now for Texas Southern, so Jalen Weisinger will run the offense. He's got 11 points tonight. They dump it back to Carter, and Hetty says, I'll take that. Jacoby in oh. transition. Steps back and forth and fades away and misses off the heel, but D.J. has the miss, and he puts it up and lays it in. And all of a sudden, it's a Wildcat lead off of a great instinctual move by Hetty to get that steal. Almost makes a tough basket, but DJ makes it. Wow. Look out, here goes Cissé hooping the harm. Downhill with pace, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. And that is DJ's second foul. But yeah, Harmon with three, Halsey with three, Henderson with three. And we'll see Kellen Farouk a Houston native and originally started another HBCU, Hampton, but he redshirted the only year he was there and he's played the last two seasons at TSU. And one is good. And it's a two point lead for the Tigers and Damani McIntyre comes back in. McIntyre's only played two minutes, but he has two steals. It's what he does. What he's here for. 
He also has two points on one of three shooting. Zion Harmon also back in as the Wildcats will go real small ball here. Teddy is in tie tallest yeah. play on the court. With only one player that can really be described as a forward, that being DJ Carter Hollinger. McIntyre kick out, long three for Hetty, no good. Wild rebound goes the way of Texas Southern. Here's Farouk, painted area is open. He kicks it out, catch and shoot three. Bang for Jalen Weisinger. Just gave him a little bit too much room there. Five point lead for Texas Southern, their second largest of the evening. Dyson behind the head. Underneath, DJ Carter Hollinger, all kinds of contact, and he'll go to the line. You can't trade twos for threes, though. No. And enough, but it's another 6 0 TSU mini run. Every time the Wildcats get anything offensively, it's immediately answered by Texas Southern. Especially with CSA making these tough. Tough mid-range layups and ISO plays. Every time, you know, the Wildcats seem to kind of get their energy back going, it just, you know, those are, you know, some of the tougher baskets to lose out on because it'll be something you can't even get mad at your defense for. It's mm, frustrating. Cissé has 11 points in 11 minutes. He's four of six shooting and three for three from the penalty strike. Back to a three-point game after the two shots were made by DJ. Jalen Weisinger, he's been the spark plug for TSU tonight, and then a miss pass by Grayson Carter. He threw it to his coach, and unfortunately, Johnny Jones is not a legal player on the floor. Not, he hasn't been a legal player on the floor in a minute, so. Ever since his days at LSU, Eight twenty-five to go on a three-point TSU lead. Dyson tries to go baseline, step back, runner, good. Tough bucket for Dyson. And now it's once again a one, only a one-point lead. This game has been close the entire time. And it will be until triple zeros, I think. Cisse, the hot hand of the moment, drives, switches hands in midair and floats it in. And Coach Theus is irate at his team's defensive performance right now. A frustrating bucket to give up. Especially when you're struggling to get easy looks on the other end, it seems that every look that TSU is getting is pretty simple. Zion, he tries to step back. And the same result as before. And I think there's also gonna be a Texas Southern foul underneath. As we go to the media, timeout BCU down by one and it will be a Texas Southern foul 23 this on Davis no correction Farouk 32 oh Mario, yeah, Mario Davis the graduate student has not played tonight no I was I just saw two I saw a two and a three and I was like oh 23 <laughs> we flipped the numbers on us up here in the booth stay up to date with everything Bethune Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media Give VCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at VCU underscore athletics. For the latest on VCU basketball, follow at VCU hoops on Twitter and Instagram. Nice little mini fight back by the Wildcats with a couple of nice baseline jumpers by Dyson and Harmon. I mean, and it's gotta be those two that carry the load here down the stretch. Harmon's got 16, Dyson's got 15, but DJ Carter Hollinger with a sneaky 13 points on the night. Yeah, I mean, he's had really good offensive performances when the Wildcats need him to throughout the season. Reggie Ward's another guy who often will come in and score 10, 12, 13 points on, you know, drives throughout the game. Only one for two tonight. But that's mostly due to the amazing post presence of Texas Southern. Yeah, Texas Southern, uh, we're on double-double watch right now. Seven rebounds and 12 points for Granger. As he's also two points away from matching his season high. They're led by Henry with 15, Weisinger with 14, and CeCe with 13. And other than that, not much. Hunter with four, Young with five, and Carter 
with just two. So it's the three-headed monster against the three-headed monster, Harmon Dyson and Carter Hollinger against Henry Weisinger and Cisse. Yeah, I mean, Cisse's been just hooping, uh, for a lack of a better term. Gets an iso play, will hit a, hit a little dribble move, get enough space and separation to make a tough, a tough layup. And Coach Diaz is, you know, annoyed with his team allowing that. Yep. Not a typical BCU defense right now, as their opponents are shooting 52% from the floor. Normally they hold their opponents to 42.7%. That's top three in the conference. And it's going to be a technical free throw for Damani McIntyre here. And then... For the same, same could be said for Texas Southern's defense. Usually oh. holding. First one, no good. I'm not sure what Farouk did. A four, I think it was a forearm caught Zion. And he gets one of two. And the Wildcats will get the ball, and they've now tied the game. And now all of a sudden, Wildcats have a chance to really take control of this game. Oh. That might be stretching it, but at little, least take the lead. Get a back. lead. <laughs> Carter Hollinger kicks it out. McIntyre a three. Way Ooh. off. He's usually good for one triple a game, McIntyre. That one was not it. Cisse, the hot hand at the moment. He goes left right. and back to the right, and he gets his shot blocked by Carter Hollinger. Wildcats in transition. Hetty all the way to the rack. Oh, and he doesn't fall. But right there for the rebound is McIntyre. And then Hetty hits the ground with a whistle. That, that can't feel good. No, it had to, that has to hurt a little bit. Went around hard. McIntyre had an entire man on his back when he passed that out to Hetty. Yeah, great rebound by McIntyre. Damani McIntyre is listed at 6'4". <laughs> Grayson Carter is 6'10". <laughs> He's given up six inches and he out-rebounded him. First free throw is good from Jacoby Hetty. And now another Wildcats lead. Topsy-turvy the lead has been. Hetty makes them both. He hits free throws at 73% on the season, part of a Three free throw shooting team at 74% on average. That's second of the SWAC. P.J. Henry's back in. He drives and kicks. Really good close out there by the Wildcats. Ooh, Farouk cool. spinning and turning the ball over. Hetty in transition. Attacks and finishes. He only had, he had nine of the first 12 points for Bethune Cookman. He had nothing since... And then the last couple of possessions, it's been the Jacoby Hetty show. And Henry, a... illegal screen. And they're going to call it on Carter. And all of a sudden, the Wildcats are getting a lot of that momentum that was stolen from them early on. And if you want to get hot in the fourth quarter, I mean, not the fourth quarter. It feels like it's obviously the fourth quarter, but... Uh, I mean, it technically is. Yeah, second half. I just wish men's basketball would go to quarters. It'd be like every other basketball league in the world. Anyway, that's a rant for another day. Yeah. Hetty on the ball. He's got the last four Wildcat points. And the reason they have this four-point lead. Zion rips through, kicks to the corner. McIntyre doesn't take the three, and then is reached in upon by Farouk. And that's now Farouk's second foul. Wildcats are in the bonus. Yep. And the next foul will put them in the double bonus. McIntyre, for all of his defensive prowess, as he sets up for this free throw, and oh, is not a great free throw shooter. He only shoots 65 percent. Did he transfer from Southern Utah? Very unlucky bounce for McIntyre. Yeah, McIntyre led the SWAC in steals last season with 64. He's got 57 coming into the game. That means he's got 60, because he's got three tonight. He misses both free throws. But he's got 60, so he's going to surpass his stat from last year. Timeout 
Coach Johnny Jones. Let's tell you a little bit about Coach Johnny Jones. He's been about everywhere. Head coach at Memphis, North Texas, and LSU. And then he was an assistant coach at Nevada and LSU. And while he was an assistant at LSU, he coached both Ben Simmons and Shaquille O'Neal. And it's one of the key reasons that Sha Shaq's son, Shaquille O'Neal, is on this Texas Southern team. Has not made an appearance tonight. But uh, he does play for Texas Southern. And overall, 33 years of Division I coaching experience, including 17 as a head coach. As a player, not that uh, shabby either. Played at LSU, went to the 1981 Final Four. And his son, John, played for four years, both in Nevada and Texas Southern, and is now a part of his coaching staff. Yeah, he, that's a great thing to see. You know, obviously you've got a strong connection with your player. And then, you know, that player's son comes and plays for you again at your head coaching gig. Has his own son on his coaching staff. Very awkward Thanksgiving dinners when things aren't going well <laughs> for the basketball team. But obviously very excited to, you know, have that kind of legacy in the swag and legacy here in more gymnasium. Hopefully that legacy doesn't mean anything for the Wildcats. Yep. as they try to close out this game and keep this lead going. Wildcats trying point. to go to third place in the conference for the win tonight, they would do so. They would also get their first win over Texas Southern since they joined the SWAC in 2021. Both games have been close. In 2022, in this building, Texas Southern won 66 to 63. And then in Houston last year, they won 69 to 62. Texas Southern also the reigning and defending three times SWAC tournament championship champions. They've been to three straight NCAA tournaments. They've also won a first four game in two of those three years. Yeah, I mean, talented squads obviously coming through this Texas Southern team. Henry keeps the dribble alive and misses. Nice rebound by McIntyre to tap it to Hetty. Jacoby wants to go fast. Kicks it back to McIntyre, and then Zion will reset. Three-point lead for the Cats, five and a half to go. Taking the air out the ball, Zion Harmon is. Back to a pass, McIntyre free, kick out to Hetty. Doesn't take the triple. Now he does, and he makes it! Great shot by Hetty, and shout out Gardner. For managing though, basically defend McIntyre and Hetty on the same kind of move there. But, you know, sometimes good offense beats good defense. Cissé will look to try and answer here. He's face guarded by McIntyre. Cissé gets to the paint, jump stops, and is fouled by Damani. And that'll be Damani's third foul. So McIntyre, Harmon, Hulse, and Henderson all have three fouls now for the Wildcats, Dyson has two. Checking in on the Texas Southern foul trouble. Young has three, Weisinger has three, Carter has three. Granger, Hunter, Craig, and Farouk both have two. And now here's Cissé at the line. Cissé makes the first. He is a Lafayette, Louisiana native and a two-time All-State performer at St. Thomas More High School. Started his college career at the JUCO level at LSU Eunice, a satellite school of Louisiana State University. Averaged 15 and a half points his freshman year, then transferred to Indian River State, also a JUCO, put up great numbers there, then went to the D1 level in Incarnate Word, led the team in scoring last year, and now he's here at Texas Southern. So Harmon almost lost the ball and does. Cissé all alone against DJ, and DJ wins the battle. And the war as he tips the rebound to Deshaun Dyson. Dyson ahead. Hetty. Oh, doesn't get it to go, barely. As this game is up and down and all around. Very fast pace. Wildcats in the middle of a 10-2 run. Henry, Henry step back good. Nice move there by Henry. Texas Southern keeping this one within arm's reach. Wildcats will take the air out of the ball all the way back near midcourt. I like the fact that Damani McIntyre is playing some crucial minutes here. 
DJ down low, rips through, open for three, no good. And that's only the second three-point miss for uh, Dyson today. Cissé quickly the other way. No time to stop and think. No. Immediately trying to find the gap that he can get. Now he's playing iso ball again. He dumps it down low to Grayson in the dunker spot. And it's an and one. And a chance to tie the game. And depending on who this foul is on, somebody may be picking up their fourth foul for Bethune Cookman. It's, it is the fourth foul on McIntyre. And we go to a break. The under four media timeouts. This one's going to come down to the wire here. And I'm not sure who I favor in a matchup of free throw shooters. I mean, Cissé's been lights out from there. Young has also been really good. Our best free throw shooter currently is uh, DJ, who only has one foul, so we're not super worried about him fouling out or yeah. anything. Yeah, and but I am worried about the Wildcats being in foul trouble. McIntyre now has four. Harmon has three. And Halsey and Henderson both have three. The Wildcats went on a 10-2 run to increase the gap to a seven points. It's 72-65, but it's now a 6-0 run for the Texas Southern the other way to get it back to a one-point game. And the three-point play attempt is coming up for Grayson Carter and a chance to tie it. Yeah, I mean, a very tough situation for the Wildcats. Same thing with Texas Southern. Just can't seem to put these, you know, these Wildcats down either. Yeah. They've had their chances to pull away and just can't. This is eerily reminding me of the Alcorn State game statistically, right? They're out-rebounding us by a lot. They've got way more second-chance points, way more points in the paint. The Wildcats' deep shooting is keeping them in it, but can it keep them in it long enough? But they've hit that scoring point at this point where usually when they get this many, they win. Yeah, but um, it's not Texas, it's not. Texas Southern, we didn't expect them to score with the Wildcats as heavily as they have. And they've kept with VCU in what has not been one of the banner defensive days for the Wildcats. Or the Tigers. They've done good, a oh, good job. We know the Wildcats can get to 70 points like snapping a finger. Yeah. The Tigers less so. They come in only averaging 67 points a game. That's 10th in the SWAC. Carter for the and one, good. And it's tied at 72 with 3.40 to go. And they'll trade setters as Carter comes out in favor of Jamar Young. Young has three, Carter also has three. Yeah. For a team in Texas Southern that averages a conference best, that was a James Harden-esque please give me a shooting foul motion right there. She just flung that one up. Uh, but the Wildcats are in the double bonus, so we'll go to the line for two anyway, yeah. so we didn't really need to do that. Just but anyway, uh, to finish my point, the Wildcats, uh, the Tigers rather, average a swag best 4.2 blocks per game. And that's... They only have two tonight. Yeah, and that's Weisinger's fourth foul. No, that wasn't what you were bringing up, but I just noticed yeah. that it came across. So both teams have a guard with four fouls. It's McIntyre for Bethune Cookman, who's still in the game with four fouls. And I think that coach may just let him play till he fouls out and then put Hetty back in. Maybe that's the strategy. I don't know. Two oh. free throws up and good. And maybe Ward and just rotate that out play with a little bit more size. And that's definitely... going to be a foul. And that yeah. is the fourth on DJ. No, the second on DJ. No that's, no, that's the fifth on McIntyre. Oh, they got McIntyre. And he is done. Let's see who they bring in for him. It'll be Reggie Ward. Both games, Henderson Jr. and Ward are standing. And Coach Diaz has been relatively consistently, at least on the second half, not upset at his players on these fouls. I, you know. I don't, both coaches really haven't really been mad at their players for the foul. They're more complaining about the officiating. I mean, in, a, in a close game like this, you just want to focus on tactics and focus on putting your players in a best position to win the game. And Jalen Weisinger, who has four fouls and is still in the game, is at the line to potentially tie it with two shots here, and he gets the first one. 
Both Texas Southern teams, men's and women's, have been very good from the line. Texas Southern not usually good from the line. They shoot ninth best in the conference, 68.4%, but tonight, 75% and up. Harmon almost threw it away. Ward has to collect. Ward back to Dyson. Three minutes left. Dyson dances, almost lost it, and he does lose it. It's in the hands of Colby Granger, and he is fouled. Just a tough possession. Dyson. And again, a. Oh, and a TSU player is down. And. I'm going to say it. Another repeat of the Alcorn State game where down the stretch, the Wildcats had chances to win it and never got a shot because they kept turning the ball over. And they did it again right there. Yeah. Good defense on Dyson. And Texas Southern's bench wanted a review for a flagrant, and they will review it. I don't necessarily know what the flagrant is. I kinda. mean, they, they reviewed one earlier yeah. for Bethune Cookman for a similar foul on a breakaway. I, I think it is only fair to review this one. I think they will find that it's just a common foul. But again, you're giving a team that has been red hot from the free throw line more chances to beat you from the strike. Especially considering outside of the free throw line, like beyond the arc, they've been not that good this half. They haven't been that good all day, 29% total, but just beating us from beating the, uh, the Wildcats on the line. Both teams have led seven times. There have been eight ties. The Wildcats have led for 56% of the game, but not right now as Texas Southern has a chance to take the lead at the free throw line. As up steps, Colby Granger. And if he hits both of these, he'll have tied his season high in points with the HBCU Classic game out in Las Vegas against North Carolina a &T. And now both teams are in the double bonus for the last three minutes. So it's gonna be a lot of free throws coming up. Devonnie McIntyre has already fouled out of the game for Bethune Cookman. Weisinger has four, and he's the second leading scorer for Texas Southern. And he is still in there, number five. One of two. Still a one point lead for Texas Southern. Jacoby Hetty back in. He hands to Zion. Texas Southern really pressing above the arc. McIntyre, or excuse me, Deshaun Dyson drives and is fouled. And this is just going to be a free throw shooting contest yeah, down, down the stretch. stretch. Now it depends on who the foul is on. Not number two, I think. Yeah, it is on uh, Young. So, Young. So that's his fourth. So now they have two, the uh, Tigers have two players with four fouls. Young hasn't played as much as. Oh my goodness. More free throws missed for the Wildcats. Way below their season average from the stripe right now, and it's killing them. One of two to tie the game. Tough shot there, and now it's, now it's tied. And you're probably only going to look at, unless something crazy happens, four or five possessions for each team to close this game out. Jamar Young, oh, excuse me, that's P.J. Henry with the ball. Here's Weisinger back to Henry, who's their leading scorer with 17. Henry, head fakes, drives behind the back. Good defense by D.J. so far. He gets into the paint. He lost the ball. It's loose on the ground. Jump ball. With nope, out of bounds. Oh. The Wildcats were holding it, or had touching it at least, and laying on the out-of-bounds line with four to shoot. Texas Southern will have an inbounds play and Coach Jones calls his second time out. Didn't call the jump ball, obviously somebody was on the line or something. 
because the possession era would have favored the wild side. Yeah, but there was four seconds to shoot. So with a baseline in, I, I think you've got to find you've got to find Henry here. And it, it, it does kind of baffle me with the decision making that Cisse is not in. You've got two of your top three scores in, but not Cisse. Yeah, I don't. I would put Cisse in. He's obviously had a hot hand tonight. He's done a great job of taking that ISO play and making it work for him. And on the other hand, I mean, you might just go for a catch and shoot opportunity. You have to hide on him. Uh, Jose hasn't played since like early in the first half, so. Really have an advantage there, depending on where they take this baseline in at. But I don't. I think they're under the basket, but I feel like it shifts over a little bit. The Tigers will have four to shoot. It'll be a baseline in with the game tied, 2:17 to go. We thank you for joining us on the Cat Eye Network tonight. Almost 700 of you watching right now. We appreciate your patronage both tonight and all season long. Ooh. Cisse, catch and shoot, triple, no good. DJ with the miss. And the Wildcats will call timeout. So one timeout left for Texas Southern, two timeouts left for Bethune Cookman, both teams in the double bonus with 2.06 to go in a tie game. Remember what is at stake tonight. When they win, Bethune-Cookman will jump to third place in the conference. They will jump Texas Southern, being tied on record, but having the head-to-head -head over them, and they do not play again. That's why this game is so crucial. There is no return game because the SWAC plays an unbalanced schedule. So, if it comes down to a tie between these two teams at the end of the season, the winner of this game will get that tiebreaker spot. This is huge for seeding. Yeah, this is a very important to see where the team lands up. And then at the same time, it helps them secure a spot. I mean, it's still close down there. We have multiple teams at five and six wins. So just clearing the rest and at least getting a solid position and ensuring that you're going to be in that tournament later in uh, the towards the end of February or March. Yeah, rather. no, it'll be March is the tournament. The last day of the regular season is the 9th of March, and then the tournament is a couple days later. And then when March Madness will kick off, but we have some madness here and more. DJ Carter Hollinger doesn't get the reverse, but will go to the line. And if this is on Young, he is gone. It is not. It's on Weisinger, and he is gone. Somebody's gone. And that's a big scoring threat gone for Texas Southern in the last two minutes. One of their top three scorers. <laughs> James Henderson Jr. got up on the bench. It was like five supposed to be out to the ref. <laughs> He'll be replaced by... Zytarius Mortal, the sophomore from Alexandria, Louisiana, but played his high school ball for Sunrise Christian out in Arizona, one of the prep basketball powers in the country. Yes, the man Mortal is. Got the punt off, thank God. Only your second attempt. Second at attempt. You know. As a freshman at Texas Southern, Mortal hit maybe the biggest shot of his life, a game winner to upset Arizona State as DJ hits both free throws. That gives the Cats a two-point lead. Great job by him, and now a clutch stop could really put the Wildcats in a good position to win this game. Remember, both teams are in the bonus. And just point. one timeout for Texas Southern. Cisse, he loves to attack downhill. He's matched up with DJ, he's been that way a lot today. Zip oh. pass, intercepted by Harmon. There's the stop. Another huge defensive play late in the game by Zion Harmon. 120 to go, Wildcats by two and with the ball. Ward, back to Hetty. Oh my. Almost faked the 30-footer. DJ, 
Dances, drives, kicks. Zion, no space for the three. Three to shoot, he takes the triple. No good off the back iron, saved by Dyson. And the Wildcats get 20 more seconds to work with. And now that's... Timeout, Bethune Cookman. That's, that's a good timeout, they had one to give. They still have one left. And that was, I mean, obviously other than scoring, that's what you want the Wildcats to do. Keep possession, get more time off the clock. Now you can make it a four or five point game and put it, uh, make it at least a two possession game, obviously. Yeah. And now you don't have to worry about a sporadic three and you can just slow down pace of play. You're in a good situation. If you're the Wildcats here, what do you draw up? Because I know what I would draw up. I want to have your opinion. I'm thinking, I mean, Zion Hunter's probably going to touch the ball regardless. He's going to get double. I think you give it to Zion, draw a double on him. Somebody's going to be open. You hope it's either Deshaun Dyson. DJ had a really hot hand late. I think you, somebody's going to get open, and you want him open either on the three-point line or on the dunker spot. That's what I think their plan of attack is coming down to this last two seconds. Yeah, I think the ball has to go to DJ. He's been the hot hand. He's been good at driving and getting fouls, and he's been good from the line. He's really been the best uh, wildcat from the line tonight. And maybe the men can, you know, kind of cast out the demons after the women's game went close and late and lost. DJ Carter Hollinger tonight, 15 points, his career high is 18 this season in the win over Mississippi Valley State. Here we go, a massive possession. The one thing you cannot do is turn the ball over. Or foul, because you immediately give them a chance to score on the other end. And if they get a three-point play, I think you might intentionally foul, depending on how much time is left. We but will we have see. to get there first. Ten to shoot for Harmon. It's going to be an iso play. He's going to go over it himself. He's going to lose the ball, but he will be fouled. Whoa, the whistle yeah. bailed him out there. He didn't really have control of the ball, but he got hit on the arm, and he'll go to the line. And I'm not sure who they called that foul on. It was not Young, so he's still in the game with four. I'll wait for our stat sheet to update. Harmon good on the first. Is, uh, immortal. Immortal? Yeah. And the second. Clutch Gene free throws for Zion. Four point lead for the Cats. 42 seconds to go. They play a little bit of pressure defense. Mortal will bring it up across the time strike. Gets a screen from Young. Mortal harassed. Gets it to Granger. Now Cisse drives, fouled. But crucially, not an and one. It. Deshaun Dyson picks up the foul. That's his third. We're, we're okay with that. The Wildcats have scored the last five points. And with three fouls, James Henderson Jr. is going to come in. Is he going to he's going to replace Zion? That's an interesting one. You'd think you'd replace DJ or Reggie Ward, but I guess you're going all out on the height. Cisse yes. is five for five from the line so far tonight. With his team down four, 27 seconds left. They're going to the monitor probably to review how much time is on the clock. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. If he makes them both, it's a two-point game. The Tigers will trap to try and get a turnover and then foul if the Wildcats get it in the front court. And he got the first one. And now it comes down to that free throw shooting contest we mentioned earlier. Yep, and you want DJ to catch this ball if they foul immediately. Now, if they trap, you have Dyson as an outlet man as well as Zion Harmon, who are gonna... Ooh. Good on the second. Timeout, Texas Southern. They take their final timeout. Now, now, I'm not up on my rulings. This is a really finicky one. I don't think that gives the Wildcats a chance to advance the ball. I, I yeah. don't think so either. We'll see in a couple seconds. So it is a full timeout. So we have a full minute to think this over. Now, the Tigers are going to trap heavily. 
and try and force a turnover. If they don't get a turnover, and they will foul if the Wildcats get in the front court because the shot clock is off with 29 seconds to go. The Wildcats need to play some keep away and take as much time off the clock before they get fouled as possible. Yeah, I mean, you get the ball in bounds, you're probably gonna get, you know, gonna get trapped, you know this. Don't do anything dumb. Don't foul anybody, don't turn the ball over. In worst case, at least get it past the time strike and just get fouled. You want probably DJ or Harmon taking those free throws. And then, depending on if, who makes what, you might as well intentionally foul. Yeah. If it's only if, if you're up by more than three, yeah. you so, want to foul. Yeah, if you if they make one of these. If they make, especially if they make the first. Yeah, or I mean, the there, there's the John Rothstein adage, right? Always foul up three late. We're not up three, we're up two. But And there's still 29 seconds, there's ample amount of time, but if we get down yeah. to about 10, they're definitely yeah. gonna look to foul, hopefully. Re remember the twists and turns that the women's game had. Yeah. Both teams had chances to win it, and eventually, Texas Southern touched the ball last, so they won. Whoever touches the ball last may win this one. Will it be more magic or heartbreak hotel? We'll find out in 29 seconds. Texas Southern brings the press. Zion to throw it in. Who's open? Seneca Willoughby's open. They get it back to Zion. Now they trap. Back to Willoughby. Throws it ahead. Dyson catches into the front court. He trips, he loses the ball, it's way on the ground, it's a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to Bethune Cookman. Reggie Theus says he was screaming for a timeout. So the Wildcats will have to get it in again with 18 seconds left. But now they're at least on their side of the court. Texas Southern doesn't have a timeout. So even if they, they have to immediately try to get the ball back up court. I think they're gonna, if they get the inbounds clean, they're gonna foul immediately. You don't really have the time yeah. to be playing around. So, Hetty has the ball in the inbound. You're gonna want this to go to Zion and then to foul him. Either him or DJ are your best two free throw shooters out there. Yeah. But worst, worst comes to worst, you... They throw it up, Carter Hollinger has it. Carter Hollinger is fouled. That's best case scenario for Bethune Cookman. And I don't think Texas Southern were looking to foul that early. I'm not sure why you wouldn't foul. Number four is the question in the referee's call. Yeah. Anyway, it's time for some free throws. The first one is in off the iron, and it's a three-point game. Ward replaces Willoughby. Great job by Seneca Willoughby on that inbounds play to get it into the front court. Yeah, good job by him. And now you're in a position. The second free throw is missed. It's still a three-point game. 16 seconds to go and a foul. And so now James Henderson's going to come in. So the Wildcats... So if you're the Tigers here, it is this the make the first, miss the second, try and get a rebound. You've, you're so, you're way up on the rebounding margin, 33-26, you have all the height. Yeah. And that, I, think, I think that's why Henderson set the check in. Yeah, that's probably their move. But and he didn't missed. make the first. So now Zytarius we... Mortal is just that. Oh, just a mere man here, late can't make that clutch shot and now he kind of has to make this and then they have to foul again or else they have to try to get a rebound and then a three-pointer or a quick and like yeah. a very difficult situation yeah. there still could be plenty of twists and turns there's still 14 seconds left it's good and a timeout call i had to advance the ball that's really smart yeah by coach theus they'll advance the ball into the front court so they get an easier inbounds play they're up by two with 14 seconds left. And again, there still could be twists and turns to this game. It's it's 14 seconds, not four seconds. Yeah, that's a lot of time in college basketball, especially when we have, once again, we have humans operating our shot clock and game yeah. clock. So there's going to be an extra about, I'd say, a half second delay on the clock before it starts. 
So the Wildcats have... at 80 points right now. Their highest score in a SWAT game this year was on Saturday when they beat Prairie View A&M 84-78. They've also scored 80 three other times in the win at Mississippi Valley, the win against Southern, and the win against Jackson State. And they also scored 98 in the win over FAMU. And the important thing here is to just get that ball in bounds. You have the time on your side, have the fouls on your side. You want your best free throw shooter to shoot these. Nobody has timeouts anymore, so it's gonna be on the players pretty much. They didn't advance the ball here. I'm guessing they think they can take more time getting it in the front court. That is a risky strategy. Zion runs the baseline. Somebody's got to come open. It's Dyson. He's trapped. He throws it away. Hetty's got it. Hetty is fouled with 10 seconds left. Another clutch inbounds play from the big three. Nearly, nearly, nearly was. DJ wide open on the other side of the court. He was trying to get it there, but obviously a good job by a good job fouling. And now Hetty just has to make both of these, preferably. Here we go. More clutch free throws coming, this time from Jacoby Hetty. <laughs> it's good, the first one. Makes the first. The Chicago native who was brought here by fellow Chicago native assistant coach Billy Garrett. Started his career at Wabash Valley College. Put up superstar numbers there. Used to the Windy City and his heart might be. It is oh. off iron and no good. It's still a three point game. He could foul here. Mortal is fouled. And that's on Zion probably, so that'll be his fourth. And now they bring the big boys in to try and rebound. No timeouts once again. Wow, this game is wild. Smart move. What we were talking about, you know, you're up three, you don't, you can't have that foul to give, basically. As we approach 10.30 Eastern Standard Time, late oh, night yeah. on a school night for all these fans at Moore Gymnasium. Didn't even notice until you said that. I didn't even notice until I looked down at my phone just now. Mortal at the line again, he went one for two last time. Three point game. He missed the first one again. Mortal on the season is a 66% free throw shooter. And you know, you gotta, Texans gotta be kicking themselves about having him with the ball at this point. Cisse's been amazing. Yeah, from and the then you've got, and Henry, and, and Henry. neither of them have had a chance. It's up. It's good, a two-point game again, 81-79. Wildcats have a third inbound play to make. Dyson in the corner. Dyson running up the floor. He's crashed to the ground and fouled by Chris Craig. And they might call that a flagrant. That's his fourth foul. I don't think so, I just think they're yeah. running hip to hip and Craig pushed him a little bit. He's trying to get the foul. After the off-ball reach-in call we had in the women's game, nothing surpri would surprise me now. That is also true. But Hetty was slow to get up. He's stretching. Dyson at the line yeah. now. 5.3 seconds left. So no we've had out. DJ Carter Hollinger go one of two. <laughs> Jacoby Hetty go one of two. Now it's Deshaun Dyson's turn. And he makes the first one. Now, if he makes this second one, all of a sudden, it's looking do or die for Texas Southern. Now, 5.3 seconds is an ample amount of time to get a three off, but not a four. And especially at that point, you're just going to let him shoot that three. You know, don't foul him. You Here we go. Good. Ice water in the veins of Deshaun Dyson. Don't foul now. Three seconds left. Henry guarded, throws it up. No good! This one belongs to the Maroon and Gold. They've defeated the reigning SWAC champions, and they've got their first ever win in SWAC competition against Texas Southern. What a ball game, Henson. What a show by the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman University. We said they have to play their game if they want to win this game, and that's exactly what they did. They forced Texas Southern to play this topsy-turvy back and forth, back and forth game that they're so comfortable with playing. 
and ends up coming down to those big three guys. Hetty had an amazing night. Dyson had an amazing night. Harmon had an amazing night. And DJ Carter Hollinger also 16.8 for nine from the line. Yep. Clutch free throw shooting. They ended up actually 71% for the line, which is just barely below their season average. They did get a lot of clutch shots down the stretch. Oh my goodness. For context, for those of you watching at home, Henson and I have been on our feet for about the last 10 minutes, which is about 30 seconds in in-game time. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 30 timeouts deep <laughs> and a couple more stoppages of play on top of that. But we are happy, especially after, you know, that tough loss in the women's game, frustrating calls, you know, stuff like that always, as a, you know, as a fan and as a commentator, you get disappointed when a game ends on an on a off-ball call. But back to the men's game. That was in the past. This is the present. 83-79, final score here in Moore Gymnasium, one of the last home games of the season for we the Bethune-Kirkland Wildcats. Yeah, we've only got two left. It's not next weekend. It's the weekend after the Alabama schools come to town. Let's get you through those final scoring totals as the band plays the alma mater. For Texas Southern, I mean, the top four guys had great nights. Henry, 17 points on 7 of 13 shooting. Four steals, a team high for him. Cisse, 17 on 5 of 10. And 7 of 7 from the free throw line. Well, aren't we glad he wasn't at the line with some, with some of those clutch moments. Uh, Weisinger had 16 points and fouled out. Granger had 13. But below that, not a lot of scoring was done by Texas Southern. Young had five, Carter had five, Hunter had four, and Mortal had two, and he missed two clutch shots down the stretch at the free throw line. A brilliant performance for the Wildcats. They made one of the, be one of the best defensive teams in the SWAC look like they weren't even there sometimes. Tough shots throughout, and a great overall team performance here as we wrap up in more gym. Let's get you through the Bethune Cookman player stats. Um, Zion Harmon had 20. Dashawn Dyson had 18. Also, both of those players ridiculous from beyond the arc. Three of seven and three of six, respectively. Hetty had 17. Most of that late in the game. Carter Hollinger had 16. A big performance for DJ. Willoughby had five. Ward had four. And McIntyre had three. But three steals for McIntyre as well. Team stats. The Wildcats were out-rebounded 34 to 26 and 10, of, and 10 to 7 on the offensive glass. That led to 10 second chance points for Texas Southern and 11 for Bethune Cookman. Texas Southern turned the ball over 15 times, leading to four, 21 points off turnovers for the Wildcats. Wildcats turned the ball over 11 times. That's fantastic. Really secure with the ball, especially down the stretch, leading to 14 points off turnovers for Texas Southern. The Tigers commanded the paint, 34 points in the painted area. Bethune Cookman just 22, but unlike the Alcorn State game, they shot well from outside. They continued shooting well from outside to give them a chance late in the game, and they didn't turn the ball over in the last two minutes. And that ends up to your final score, 83-79 Bethune Cookman over Texas Southern. The Wildcats move to seven and four in conference play, and they will be in third place in the SWAC after tonight is done. It'll be Southern first, Grambling State second, then Bethune-Cookman in third. Texas Southern will be fourth. Once again, your final score, 83-79, the Wildcats win this one at home. For Cat Eye Network executive producer, Eugene Robinson, SID Bryce Lenoski and Brian Harvey and our entire student-led broadcast crew here at the Cat Eye Network. Thank you so much for watching our coverage of Bethune-Cookman basketball tonight. We will see you in two weeks for the final homestand of the season. Have a good one and hail Wildcats.